Hi, I'm Dave from boynaband.com and today I'll be teaching you how to make a simple patch on the Axe FX. We'll be going through how to set up your Axe FX, tune your guitar, clear an existing patch, add in an amp block and explain some of its functionality, add in a speaker block and explain some of that functionality, and save the patch. Okay, let's begin. Setting up the Axe FX. Let's do this fast so we can get on with making the patch. Firstly, connect your Axe FX to whatever you'll be listening to it through. I'm setting mine straight into my computer for recording. Take leads from the outputs of the Axe to the inputs on the device you're using. Next, plug in your guitar into the front instrument input. Now, turn up the input 1 knob to increase the guitar input volume and the output 1 knob to increase the volume coming out of the Axe FX. Make sure the input level is just about hitting the red when you're strumming at your loudest. This should be just around the noon to two o'clock position on the input knob for most guitars. Sorted. Now, let's turn it on and get to work. Tuning your guitar. The XFX comes with a convenient built-in tuner. Just hit the tuner button on the front, then tune up your guitar with assistance from the on-screen display. Simple as that. Now, let's get to the fun stuff. Clearing an existing patch. For this tutorial, we'll need a nice blank slate to begin with. Now, the Axe FX standard should have some blank patches near the end, but the Ultra, which we're working with, should have just the one blank patch on number 383, right at the end. If you leave this blank, you can save the patch you create over another patch and leave this one blank as a useful starting point for creating new patches. But since clearing a patch teaches you some useful techniques, we're going to clear an existing patch in this tutorial. First, scroll to a preset you don't mind losing. The XFX has three banks of 128 patches each, meaning 384 patches on it, from 0 to 383. If 384 patches isn't enough, you can save your patches to a computer, meaning you'll never run out of space for your XFX creations. I'll be explaining how to do this in a future tutorial. Let's take a listen to this patch. Okay, I can't see myself using that effect anytime in the near future, so let's clear this one. Press Layout to see the patch layout screen. Now, to get rid of the blocks that are already in there, scroll to them with the nav buttons, then, using the value knob, turn the dial. This allows you to choose from all the blocks that can be put in your signal chain. Now, turn it until it says shunt, then press enter. Be careful here. If you turn it to none, I'll show you what happens here, and press enter, it will break the signal chain. See, there are no lines connecting those two blocks together, meaning no signal will come through. If you accidentally turn it to none, highlight the area, and turn it to shunt, then press enter, then go back one, press enter twice, that connects them up, and again, enter, enter, and the signal chain is complete. Okay, so let's go through and do that. Shunt, enter. Now here on the row below, we have a block we want to get rid of. To do that, we do use that none value we were talking about earlier. So scroll to the none value, and press enter. Simple as that. A quicker way to shunt is to highlight the block you want to remove, then press exit, followed by enter. Let's do that on the remaining blocks. Exit, enter, and there. The entire patch is clean and ready for us to work with. The amp block. The amp block is, shockingly enough, the amp simulator for the Axe FX. This will shape your tone and allow you to emulate a bunch of expensive and awesome sounding amps. So, let's get started. Move in one or two spaces, then scroll with the value wheel until you get to the amp block. It's the first one there. And then press enter. The spaces you leave at the front mean that it'll be easier to add in some effects blocks such as drive or compression before the amp block at a later date. Now, to look at the parameters of the amp block, make sure it's highlighted, then press the edit button. Now, this might look a bit more familiar to conventional amp users. You've got your bass, mid, treble, drive, and two more knobs, global and type. If we leave global to zero, the amp works normally. We'll discuss this feature in a future tutorial. The type knob is where we want to be. So, use the nav buttons to move to it. 
This knob allows us to choose the type of amp we want. So scroll through it with the value knob. And if I play the guitar, you can hear there's loads of different types in there. So I'm in the mood for some high gain stuff. So I'm going to scroll to Recto Red. Sweet. Now, with the nav buttons, I can move to the other settings and change them as well. I'm just going to change everything to about noon, just for now. Some useful things to note. If you move over the treble knob and press enter, it toggles the BRT or brightness switch on or off. Similarly, if you move to the type knob and press enter, it toggles the boost switch, giving another 12 decibels of gain and a nice bit of distortion. Hear that? Now, feel free to change the drive, bass, mid and treble to taste as you would in a normal amp. Then, let's move on. If you're going into a computer or PA, the guitar might still sound a bit strange. That's because we need a cabinet in the signal chain. If you're already going into a cab that isn't FRFR, meaning full range flat response, and want to keep the tonality of the cabinet, you can leave it there and skip ahead to saving the patch. The cabinet block. However, for those computer, PA or FRFR cab users, FRFR cabs reproduce sound with an equal volume for all frequencies, rather than conventional cabs which emphasize different frequencies. Press the layout button to return to the layout screen, then scroll to the next space, with the nav buttons and dial in a cabinet block. Press edit to open it up. Now you'll be presented with three knobs. Mode switches between mono high res, which is a higher quality mono signal, mono low res, which is a lower quality mono signal. If you have a lot going on in the patch and the AxeFX is struggling to cope with the processor load, switching to this will give you more processor space to work with and stereo, allowing you to have two separate cabinets. For now, let's stick with mono high res. The air knob here defines how much air you add in. Surprising, right? Air is a low pass filtered direct signal mixed with the process signal, which can really brighten up a tone, especially a high gain one. So if I turn this up to full and then move to the air frequency, because a higher air frequency value makes it more prominent, listen to the change in the tone of the guitar. Much brighter. But all the stuff we really want is on page two. So, using the page buttons, scroll to page two. The cab knob controls the cabinet type, the mic knob controls the microphone you're recording with, and the drive knob can be used to simulate speaker breakup, which is the speaker's natural distortion. So, select the cab type you want. I think I'm going to go with 4x12 Recto 2 and the mic you want, scroll with the nav buttons and then choose from the selection you've got available. I think I like that U87 condenser, it's got a nice little low end there. And then set the drive to the value you'd like. Now, that's almost ready for saving. One last thing I want to show you in the amp block before we save it. If we scroll back to the amp block, remember layout, move with the nav buttons and press edit. Otherwise, while you're in edit mode, press edit to switch to the next block in the signal chain, just like that. So we're in the amp block now and scroll to page two with the page buttons. There are a lot of knobs here, but the one we're really interested in is master. This controls the master volume. When you turn a tube amp up really loud, an awesome tonality comes out of it. To replicate this, we can turn the master volume up. So if we have a listen to the difference in tone with master lower down and turning it up, you can hear there's much more thickness to the tone. This obviously increases the volume, so to keep it down while still retaining the tonality from the maxed out amp, turn the level knob next to it down a little bit if need be. As it is, I think this effect is quite quiet, so we can afford to take that up a little bit. Awesome, huh? Saving the patch. 
press the Store button, then select the location you want to store. I'll be keeping it in the same patch 203. Then press the Down Navigation button to go to the name, and using the nav buttons in the value knob, type in the name you want. I'll go for boyinametalband.com. Then press Enter, and the confirmation box will come up, and press Enter again to save the patch. Simples. And there you have it, a very basic patch for noodling around with on your Axe FX. Join me for the upcoming tutorials where I'll be explaining some of the other features of the Axe FX and how to make your tone sound more professional and interesting. Head over to boyinaband.com for more tutorials, reviews and blogs and check out g66.eu, Europe's Axe FX supplier, for more info on the Axe FX including videos, sound clips and articles. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you around. Cheers for watching!